Chancellor, I present to you Chris Austin for the award of Outstanding Alumnus of the Year. Chris is a distinguished member of an alumni community that, as we have heard, numbers 150,000 members across the globe. As we recognize his achievements through this award, we also acknowledge and celebrate the wider successes of all Lancaster graduates and the important part they continue to play in the life of our university. Chris Austin is a senior civil servant with over 30 years of experience specializing in disaster relief, crisis management, and economic reconstruction. His career has taken him into some of the most challenging environments to lead delivery of UK aid on behalf of the Department of International Development, DFID, including war-torn Afghanistan and areas of the Caribbean ravaged by Hurricanes Irma and Maria. He also served as senior lead in DFID's response to the 2018 Ebola outbreak in Central Africa. Chris does not court danger, but his career as a senior civil servant with postings in Africa for four years and Asia over five years means that he has often had to work in what are called fragile environments, and he has learned to cope under that pressure. His two and a half year deployment to Afghanistan from late 2014, a second posting to the country, offers a good example of this ability to respond to high pressure. Within days of his arrival in Kabul to take up his post as DFID's country director, he found himself diving for the office floor and reaching for his flak jacket after an attack on the British Embassy. In that same week, an official car was bombed and two of his colleagues were killed. Undaunted, Chris and his team made a real difference to the lives of ordinary Afghans, most notably helping, into helping to strengthen government institutions and improve the status of women and girls, managing the UK's £178 million bilateral aid programme. When he first worked in Afghanistan in 2002, girls were not being schooled because of Taliban prohibitions, and only 8% of the population lived within a two-hour walk of basic health services. By Chris's second tour of duty, 6.4 million children attended primary and secondary school, including 39% of girls, and 60% of the population lived within reach of basic health care. Chris attributes this to the combination of effective use of aid, including the British funding for which he was responsible, and the creation of strong collaborative networks. He does not rule out going back into to Afghanistan because he knows that his work was made, has made a difference there and he is proud of what he and his team have achieved. This dedication to making a difference can be seen throughout Chris's career, from his time as country representative in Bangladesh, through working as principal private secretary to the Secretary of State for International Development, to leadership of the G8 Summit's discussions on transparency in the oil, gas and mining sectors on behalf of the UK's Cabinet Office. Different types of crisis have shaped Chris's recent career path. Working from Bridgetown Barbados as commander of the UK Task Force, he led the team responsible for delivery of immediate relief to British overseas territories in the wake of Hurricanes Irma and Maria. Less than 12 months later, he was tackling a different type of natural disaster, this time the potentially catastrophic Kivu Ebola outbreak that hit Central Africa in 2018. A senior lead for DFID, Chris coordinated the British response, building on the lessons learned in earlier outbreaks of the disease. Prior to his time with DFID, Chris served with the World Bank and International Monetary Fund, and he also undertook a secondment to Her Majesty's Treasury as head of EU finances. A respected member of the International Federation of Accountants, he chaired the International Accounting Education Standards Board for four years, from January 2015. In 2017, he received a CBE for services to international development in the Queen's New Year's Honours. The range of Chris Austin's achievements over the last three decades should act as a reminder to each of you graduating today that you too can be successful with commitment and dedication. In reaching for success, we hope that you will make the most of your Lancaster qualifications, not only to better yourselves, but also to benefit your families, your university, and the wider communities in which you live and work. Chancellor, it is my honor to present Chris Austin for the award of Outstanding Alumnus of the Year.
do the uh, doffing properly. <laughs> Only instruction. Uh, Chancellor, fellow members of the university, honoured guests, families, uh, thank you so much. It's brilliant to be back in Lancaster. 26 years since I graduated, not as long as the Chancellor, but there have been massive changes here. Uh, I'd like to add my congratulations to all of you who've just had your degrees conferred and those on this side of the room who have got that pleasure coming up very shortly. It's, it's a great achievement. Um, as, as I reflected on what Lancaster had done for me many years ago, I unearthed a piece of paper I wrote to my seniors when I finished called The Year in Lancaster. It was uh, not at all driven by the way I've been taught to write at the university and think. It was incredibly pompous uh, and self-serving, but in five pages, I uh, talked about what I'd learned, uh, who I'd met, and the, the title was A Year in Lancaster, and my conclusion was it was a year well spent. And as I reflect 26 years further on, that's absolutely the case. Um, I'd just done four years in Southern Africa, living in Malawi, working on Zambia and Zimbabwe when I came to Lancaster. I was, I was tired, I was probably a little bit burnt out. I was upset because I'd lost some dear friends. I was a bit fed up with the civil service uh, and thought maybe doing an MBA would uh, enable me to do something completely different. I had three objectives. One was to see, could I find a different career path? Uh, secondly, could I learn something about leadership and strategic thinking in a formal setting that would be useful for whatever I do next? And thirdly, could I have a rest? Uh, I managed to achieve two of those. Uh, I'm still in the civil service, 29, 26 years on. It's actually 35 years this year since I joined uh, in Margaret's, Margaret Thatcher's second term. It seems a long time ago. Um, but but the, uh, you know, in 1993, I was single, and after I left Lancaster, I connected with an old university friend who's now Mrs. Austin and has enjoyed most of those travels. She didn't come to Afghanistan for obvious reasons, but she's been a constant source of support. So I'd like to pay tribute to her for backing me through my career uh, so far. 